Hey, good afternoon. Got some great verses here. Uh, and it's so crazy. I don't even know, you know, I mean, just the way his spirit leads me through this. This is found in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel um, chapter 24. And uh, I'm going to go through verses 10 through 14. But the one I really felt the spirit, like I just <laughs> allowed him to walk me through it was uh, verse 12 here. So I'm just going to go through several words, you know, between verses 10 and uh, 11 and 13 and 14 and uh, 12. I'll just read it the way his spirit laid it out to me. But like, man, it's so crazy. It's like Jesus Christ himself is teaching you. He's the only one that that he's the lamb of God, the only one worthy to break that seal. Satan's put over you through your carnal fleshly nature, right? Your flesh through your flesh. Okay which is willfully ignorant, you know, you're choosing to uh, believe a lie, right? And that's the bigger picture of it, basically, because uh, the spiritual is played out in the physical. Satan is a copycat, right, in a way. And that's, that's what confuses a lot of the elect, right? They see how it's being played out in the physical and they think that's it. They think they got it. But the truth of the matter is this, uh, our bodies are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we've all partaken of it. And... Uh, that's why we're here. And this is this is like a punishment, this world. Uh, the world's a prison. Our bodies are prison suit. And uh, God is the only one who can commute our sentence and release us and bring us back home by completely having a complete reversal of the way we're thinking. Okay, understand that. And, and really, this whole system, God's in charge of everything, right? Um, it's perfection. I mean, what he did was perfect and why he did it is perfect. Everything was perfect by the Lord. Um, gave us complete free will, let us experience life, what it's like to be without it. But he loves us. He has compassion and mercy and love for us. So he came here and revealed himself to us, revealed the truth. And, and uh, he's always with us. He's always calling us to turn back home like the prodigal sons, because that's who we are. We're all the prodigal sons who've went astray. Okay. So anyways, I'm going to get right into this. Um, 1 Samuel 24, 10 through 14. And man, there's some beautiful nuggets of truth here. Uh, this treasure, you know, so this is just beautiful and I'm no better than anybody else. It's just, uh, and I know that, you know, I know I'm a sinner and, um, thank God we have a savior, right? So here we go. Uh, first Samuel 24, 10 through 14. So, and I'm reading from a King James gotcha there. Yeah. It, you know, uh, and I understand why, but I do see that the King James was the first one that was uh, adversely affected by that Mandela effect in, uh, I mean, it's just so crazy. It made me sick in my stomach when I saw it. And I didn't even know what it was when I first saw it. I just knew because I had read my Bible, especially the New Testament, multiple times through. And uh, when I seen crazy words that didn't make sense in there anymore, in uh, like modern words and stuff in the original 1611 King James. And like I said, my mom has a Bible that's like 130 something years old. My great grandfather was a Baptist minister. Um, and he gave it, you know, it's been passed down through the family. So anyways, just seeing these things, and it's even changed in there. So it's it's just so, the word Easter was never in the original 1611 King James. Uh, it, obvious. Isaiah eleven six 6 was never the wolf shall lay with the lamb. It was always the lion shall lay down with the lamb. Always. And there's residual evidence for that everywhere. Sermons, books, written, everything. It's in different literature where it's laying out the verse properly. But yet, the way you read it now and, and it's crazy things because the majority of pastors are like, Oh, it's always been that uh, you're not seeing it. And I'm not saying they're not saved, but for some reason they're just unable to see it or, or think that something supernatural or however it occurred, you know, could occur. So anyways, that's enough on that. Let's go in here. First Samuel uh, 24, 10 through 14. Uh, Behold this day, thine eyes have seen how the Lord has delivered thee today into my hand in this cave. And some bade me to kill thee, but mine eye spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Now, the word Lord here, like when it's first used to see how that the Lord, this is uh, 3068, it's Yahweh, Jehovah, the self-existent, eternal, one true God. Okay. Now this other word, Lord, uh, when he's talking about, I think this was Saul, right, who was persecuting him and coming after him. I will not put forth my hand against my Lord. And this is speaking about his king, which was King Saul at the time. And it's a Hebrew word, H113. 
It's not 3068, okay? It means my king, who's king over uh, that God has put over the nation and the, the, the one who's ruling, acting as ruler from his authority, who God, God put over the nation at that time, okay? Who he chose for king at that time. And it said, for he is the Lord's anointed, who he chose to be king at that time, at that particular time. So let's look at this other word, day, okay? He delivered thee today, okay? To show, basically to reveal uh, this separation, this difference between the light of the truth and the darkness of error. So he's using David here to reveal like the, the difference between these two different, people of two different mindsets, basically. Either you're connected to God, you're living, uh, loving the truth and, and living for God, right? You're serving him or, or you're serving this world and serving yourself and following your own fleshly carnal nature, you know, uh, from your fleshly mindset. And I'm not saying it's all wicked, right? But you just don't understand the truth completely. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, basically you living and loving a lie and serving yourself in this world. It's just the craziest thing. Like he said to that young ruler, you have to give up everything. Like every aspect of your life, you have to give over to God, like all your sins, everything. Because <clears throat> our flesh must be put to death every day, crucified multiple times. And he said he will forgive us basically in that uh, verse where he talks about forgive your fellow man seven times 70. I mean, that's how many times he'll forgive us and even more. You know, I mean, but I mean, if you sin more than that one day, that's pretty horrible. I mean, yeah, I don't even think I do that, right? <laughs> so anyways, so there's that. So basically the Lord is is, is revealing through this, this uh, story that's going on here between King David and Saul to reveal this difference between the light of the truth and this darkness of error. Okay, so... And then uh, in this cave, you know, into my hand. So the Lord delivered thee today into my hand in this cave. Having this darkness, this darkness. So this word cave is 4631 and it goes to 5783. Hebrew, I believe, H. So H 4631 and H 5783. Uh, so this reveals this darkness, his darkness of error. It is being laid bare. It's being exposed. Okay. So it's being exposed. And uh, some bade David to kill him, right? And 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 meaning basically prematurely. And um, but he knew God had a, a greater plan because he trusted in the Lord. And plus, he was a uh, uh, joined to the Lord. He was a man after God's own heart, even though he sinned a lot. I mean, oh man! And there's something I wish I would have printed out the other day. I mean, look at look at all of God's prophets and Moses. Hey, I. I can't do this. And, and Paul said, what a wretched man am I? And, you know, and I just, the prophets, they're like, I can't see, I can't do this. And all, all, all of us, right? So it's, it gives us all hope, right? It's meant to give us all hope because he loves us all and just wants us to turn back to him and come home and put our faith and trust in his only begotten son, the Alpha and Omega, Jesus Christ, the first and last and only physical representation of God himself. He was one of a kind. His blood was completely different. One Y chromosome, which dis distinguished his gender, right? Uh, born from God's Holy Spirit, the seed of the Holy Spirit. So there's that. Okay, so anyways, um, so this word, now let's look at this word, spared thee. So, so but my eyes spared thee. So I had pity and compassion on you, okay, to cover you so I can cover you with God's love and mercy to show you this compassion that God has for us and that I have for you as my ruler and king, because I know that God is the one who put you in charge over this nation. So, so there's that. There's, there's uh, verse 10. Now, verse 11, moreover, my father, see, see, yea, see the skirt. And uh, my father, yeah, that's a, you know, basically his, his ruler, the one that's over, has authority over him right? See the skirt of thy robe in my hand. Okay. And this word skirt is, is like, uh, man, I didn't write down the number. Anyways, it's the bottom quarter of his garment. Like he took a piece of his covering. He took a piece of this covering, right? Now you have to understand kind of like Saul is representing Satan here in a way. Okay. 
uh, he, he's joined to him as one by what he's doing, trying to persecute and chase after David to kill him and slay him, right? But David is acting like one who's joined to God because he is, okay? He's going to be the future king of Israel from where Christ would descend from. Both, it's great. I think it would actually both on Joseph and Mary's side, even though his father was the Holy Spirit. So there's that. So, okay. Um, my, moreover, and my father, uh, the one who has authority over me, see, see the this quarter of your garment that I have in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, this piece, uh, and killed thee not, so I did not slay you. Okay, so know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest, so you're hunting my soul to take it. Okay, so the, he, the, like this guy is joined to Satan. He's, he's completely joined to him at this point. He's being ruled by his fleshly carnal nature, right? He's jealous of David, and he doesn't want his throne to be taken by David. Okay, so, uh, so let's look at this word, uh, huntest. It's a Hebrew word, 6658. You lie in wait, and you chase after me to destroy me by capturing and carrying me away captive, uh, stealing my soul. You've stolen my soul as a flash of lightning and mingling it together. And you've mingled it together with these bodies of flesh is basically what it's saying here in the spiritual, in the spiritual, because we've all, because here, here's what verse 11 is kind of the, the bigger spiritual picture that was revealed. And I couldn't see this. I didn't even, the Holy Spirit. Okay. We basically took a piece. We took a bite of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we were covered over in the same covering in this flesh. So we all took a piece of this covering like Saul's garment, like David took in his hand, but it has not overtaken us. It has not destroyed us because we are children of the Most High God. Hey, dog, how about getting out of there? That's why I gave you that bone. <laughs> Come here. This is such a good dog. This is the best dog. She's so good. She's so good with people and everybody, not a, not a vicious, angry bone in her body. She is completely submissive. You know, and that's so cool. It's so cool. She's such a good dog. Um, so anyways. So basically, that's it. You know, we've all took a piece, a bite of that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but it, it had birthed into a physical form, this covering, this garment that covers over us. It's our prison suit, basically, but it hasn't overtaken us because we, we've been joined back to God, okay, and we're following God. Okay, so now verse 12. This is one I really felt the spirit. Verse 12, the Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenges me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Okay, so let's take a deeper look at that. And that's it is a pretty quick verse, but uh, there's some beautiful, beautiful things here. Now, first, let's take a look at the Samuel, this, this name. It means it's a name, right, as a designation of God. It carries this uh, in the Aramaic. It, 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 it uh, carries this mark or this brand of God. So we're carrying this mark or brand of God by being born again in the Spirit and connected back to Him. Okay, showing God's ownership over us. That's what it means, showing God's over ownership over Samuel here, over Samuel, like a brand or a mark. It carries this brand or mark, a designation of God. He belongs to God. Uh, it shows God's ownership over him because he hears him and he obeys him, his voice, right? That was well known. Okay, so uh, so this man was well known of, of being belonging to God, and he is one that is called by God. So basically, he is one that is called by God. So that's any of us who've been called by God and born again spiritually, and now we've given up everything. We're willing to do anything, even die, perish, whatever it takes for him, to follow him, okay? We've given up all that we have to follow him, no doubt about it, no matter what this world does to us or anything. And that's, so the, let's go into this verse now. Because this is all, like, this whole chapter is like this story of that, basically. This whole book, Samuel. Anyways, um, so this is Samuel 24, 12. Yahuwah, Jehovah, the self-existent, eternal one, true God, who judges and rules over all creation, basically governs over all of mankind. And he is the one who vindicates, vindicates one or condemns one and punishes one at their final judgment. 
He is the one who decides one's case, like at law, like if you're in a courtroom, like he's the judge. He's the one who decides one's case, avenging those that he declares to be innocent. So he avenges all those he declares to be innocent who join themselves back to Christ, put their faith in Christ. And, by, and he also condemns those who are guilty. And basically, he avenges us by condemning those who are guilty. This is the way the Spirit laid it out to me. And it is the Lord, by the revealing this shining forth of the light of truth, who takes vengeance on those who love the darkness of error, of their own ways, uh, who've made themselves their own gods and goddesses to worship. You know, you worship yourself, you other worship others like movie stars and these sports stars and all these things. So understand that. That has a lot of meaning right there. Okay. Worshiping these idols that are made of flesh. They worship their own bodies. They, they're, they're living and loving a lie. They'll hold on, try to hold on to their life. You know, they'll try to save themselves basically, you know, which they're going to lose their life if they do that because they're loving this world and they're holding on to it with all their might. It's so crazy. Okay, so worshiping these idols that are made of flesh as we are not our own. We're not our own. We all belong to God. Our lives are not brought into existence by our own hands, but by God's. So our lives, our existence was not brought we were not brought into existence by our own creation, by our own hands, but it was God's. That's why we all belong to him. Okay. That's, it's like, so when we're saved, it's like returning something or someone back to whom they already belong because he is our creator. Okay. So, uh, I do not own anyone. We do not own anyone. Okay. We don't. Um, and so that's why a lot of relationships fail, I think, because they try to rule over another or be dominant over the other, you know, and the best we can do is, is follow the Lord. And, you know, hopefully if our spouse or significant other is not saved, you know, uh, then by that example of following the Lord, they'll turn to the Lord. That's why he says it's best to always stay together. Right. But, you know, this is a, a, a battle, you know, no doubt about it. And it's so crazy how, like, we, we, we've been divided. We're a kingdom divided within ourselves, right? Uh, the flesh wars against the spirit. But also, like, in this world, we were all one we're, because there's no male or female, right? The angels, no, neither male nor female. But here we're divided. But yet we are made to complete each other. Each one has their strengths and weaknesses, and, and it varies from person to person, male or female, but we're made to come together as a whole, as one unit, both physically, we were made that way, and, and mentally and to help each other throughout life. And you get two together that are walking the same path, following the Lord, you know, that's a strong union right there, no doubt about it. Okay, our lives are... Uh, yeah, not brought into existence by our own hands, but by God. So we do not own anyone. So it is not our place to pass judgment on another and hand them over to their creditor, Satan, basically the one who owns them, who took possession because we've all sold ourselves into slavery by taking the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of our flesh. So he owns us. And that's why Christ came here to purchase us back redeem us like I went over yesterday and that redeem to redeem us to purchase us back buy us back okay so uh, the one who has dominion over us so we don't have the authority to judge another and hand them over to their creditor the one who has dominion over them whether it's God or Satan so who has dominion over you your flesh or, or God you know there you go there you go so there's that. That was verse 12. So now verse 13, as saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked. And that's so funny because I said that the other day and I didn't even know it was like a verse, like uh, evil begats evil or something I said like to that effect, which it does. I mean, there you go. So as the proverb of the ancients as saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Okay, let's look at this word proverb. It means this wisdom of what was said previously uh, has dominion over those who came before us, that, that God had dominion over before us. 
Okay. And it's like history, like history repeats itself. If you don't know history, which we all know it's being obfuscated from us and, and censored and uh, so many things are not right that were taught about history. So many things. I mean, just look at all the ancient ruins and there's so many that we haven't even seen that are just so ornate and carved out of, I mean, the stones and the stonework and the temple. just, okay, are we really further ahead or are we repeating history in a way, you know, because you're, you're going to, if you don't know history, you're, you're going to fall for the same crap. You're, you're going to fall for it. So he's saying we're to look back at like what's happened previously in the words of wisdom from those who were joined to God, who, who God had dominion over. Okay. So this proverb of the ancients, okay. Those who came before us in history. Okay. It says wickedness proceedeth from the wicked. Okay. This is what they said. It was like a proverb, this wisdom. Okay. Uh, is, is open it and do not. Okay. Uh, this word wickedness, 7562. So this violence uh, and iniquity, this violence, iniquity, and unfair treatment, unfair treatment that is morally wrong. Uh, uh, it's not equal. It's not equal. And I, aren't there like two sets of justice, especially for those who are positions of power or authority over us? They don't get treated the same way we do. And uh, and didn't Jesus speak about something like that? You know, yo, you seek the greatest seats in the synagogues and praise and all this. Uh, in our justice system, is it equal? Is it really equally applied? I mean, look at the people who are sitting in prison now because of what happened, uh, what was it last year, a couple of years ago? A couple of years ago, two, three years ago, right? Uh, yeah. So is it is it just? Is it equal? Uh, we know it's not. And we all know that, right? Okay. It's not equal. So violence, this, this violence and iniquity, this unfair treatment that's morally wrong, uh, this justice system that is not equal, it comes from those that are wicked. And this word, other word wicked is 7563, those who are guilty of sin and they are hostile to God and his people. Okay. These wicked people, those who are guilty of sin because they are hostile to God, they reject his only begotten son and they're hostile to God himself and those who belong to him. Okay. But my hand shall not be upon, upon thee. Okay. So basically he's saying my hand is open. It's open. He's not hiding anything. There's nothing hiding in it. His hand is open and he, and I do not have dominion over you. I don't have the right to judge you and condemn you. So we don't have the right to judge and condemn another. Okay. Even though we do see, you know, what's happening, I believe we do have the right to defend ourselves and our family and friends and another if, if they're being attacked, you know, if they're in danger of great bodily harm or death, right? I do believe it's our right to stand up and do what's right in that case, right? And uh, that's just the way I see it at the moment right now. I, I think if you walked away from someone being murdered and you know it, or someone being raped or a child being taken, I mean, does that right or wrong. You know, that'd be wrong. I believe I, I'd be willing to die to do what's right, no matter what it took. As I think most people who belong to God would. Okay. So there's that. So we don't have the right to judge and condemn another. Okay. So there's that. That's what David's saying here, because God's the one who puts you in that position of authority for a time, especially over Israel, right? So after whom, now here's verse 14, after whom is the king of Israel coming out after? Whom dost thou pursue after a dead dog or after a flea? Okay, so that's the way this is written in the King James. But uh, who is it that rules over Israel? This is what he's asking. Basically, is it is it you? Are you, are you connected to God or, or, or are you connected to Satan? Who who Who's ruling your mind? Who's to control your mind, right? Who is it that rules over Israel? God's children, right? Who is it that's ruling over God's children? After whom dost thou pursue? And uh, that word is 7291. Who is it that you chase after and persecute and harass, putting stumbling blocks before them, bribing them, tempting them with the things of this world? But you have a hostile intent. You are hunting them down through tempting them with the things of this world. And we are all tempted by that fruit and we took it. You can become like the most high God, knowing good and evil, but we've all missed the mark. We've, we've made a mistake. We've fallen into error. We've missed that goal. And that's the definition of sin, right? So that's us. That's all of us. Okay. 
and uh, this is this is what tempts us and seduces us away from God. This adulteress, this world, that whole world is Babylon. Okay, after a dead dog. Now let's look at this word here. It's oh boy, uh, forty one ninety one, I believe. This word dead dog. Um, uh, second, that's that. That goes to this. Uh, boy. To perish. So basically, you're you're chasing us and persecuting us and harassing us and bribing us, but your whole intent is hostile, and it's to put us to death, right, prematurely before we can be saved. It's to put us to death prematurely before we can be saved. The world ain't what you think it is, and it will burn. It's going to. There's no doubt. God said it would, and it will. And uh, you can see that about to happen, can't you? I mean, it's being played out. The spiritual is being played out in the physical. Okay, this dead dog, let's look at this word dog, it's 3611, sacrificing all those who've prostituted themselves, and sold their inheritance, left their first estate, and took on these physical forms. All that have prostituted themselves, sell, sold themselves into slavery, basically. And it says after A, you know, let's look at this word A, it's a, a Hebrew word 259. It means each and every one that is united together in mind, in their minds, right? And it says to, and this is like to a flea, right? Which, did I write the number for that? Uh, oh, I might not have wrote the number for that. But anyways, you can, you can look it up. Anyways, to a bug, it means an insect. It doesn't necessarily mean a flea. So all that are united together in, in their minds to this insect and to sin, uh, it's separated that have separated us from God, separating us from God. So we will perish, uh, separated us from God by what uh, we've been fed. Like it said, this grass, like be, what we've been fed, what we've been fed, uh, what we've eaten basically by what we have been fed with from this world. So basically... That's the spiritual meaning of it, right? We, we're, we're not to judge another. That's God's, God's position. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, right? And um, he avenges us by basically condemning all those who are rejecting him, um, who've persecuted us and, and are trying to kill us before we have the opportunity to be saved and, and being treated unfairly and unjustly. It says they will come after us, basically. They will persecute us, harass us, and... Uh, they will attempt to bribe us. Look, like, and, and it's coming, I'm telling you. This, this, these things are coming back around. They're going to try to implant us when digital currency comes in about a system. And I'm telling you, these credit cards with the chip in them is just a, a baby step towards that. And, uh, oh, man, if you could just see it, I wish I could explain it better. But it's coming, and they're going to bribe you. Oh, you can get this and this and this. You'll survive. You'll save yourself, basically. Oh, you better take this, or you're going to be cut off. You won't get a job. You won't go anywhere. You won't have a bank account. All these things. And uh, the government of this world it tries to rule over us through oppression and temp temptation and uh, fear and intimidation and everything else. But God, it's complete freedom. Really choose to follow, be with him or not, and his his he, he's in the promised land, right? Uh, God's garden, uh, you know, it's it's full of abundance and freedom, right? He gave us free will, and this is how he did it, allowing this world, uh, well, basically creating the angels and then deputizing them. If you look at the word in Genesis one, God there, it's H four thirty, the Elohim, right? And Satan was the superintendent on the job, and he thought he should be worship by all the others, basically take control because he was given the most talents and knowledge and abilities, right? And this world seduced us away and uh, by craft, by deceit, by a lie, by deception. And that's the way this government's going to try, uh, you know, the government, basically the governments of the whole world that are trying to deceive us and lead us astray. We're not to fear anything, not even the death of our own bodies. Okay. Those who lay down their lives for Christ's sake, you know, will be saved. We belong to him. And uh, that's what we're to do. Crucify our flesh daily, right? Like the early Christians did that were all martyred, right? They knew, they knew the truth. How could you, how could you allow yourself, you know, to be fed to lions, boiled in oil, crucified, 
uh, hung upside down and cut in half while you're still alive, tied to chariots, pulled apart. I mean, all these things that they were definitely facing and uh, seeing it happen to those who go before them and then stepping right up and be willing to do it. They knew the truth. They get to go home. We're truly set free. We get to go home. Now we all have a job and a duty while we're here and that's to follow Christ and, and plant seeds, you know, as his workers, workers of his vineyard, right? There you go. There you go. So there's that. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, this whole world is just so crazy. It's, it's just getting crazier and crazier. And like I said, at my work, man, you can really see like, there's so many things that we do that causes that, that are breaking down and they're just band-aiding and, and it causes bigger things down the road. And it, they're just so short sighted. It's, it's, it's unreal. And it's like the majority of the world. So we got to do all this extra stuff like, like, and, and some of these things can be, they don't know it because they're not out there busting their butt on the floor. Like our wealth, our inheritance is being stolen from us through our, through our labor, our, our work and labor. And they're oppressing us and making it harder and harder for us to uh, survive in this world. Basically, it's like the frog in the boiling pot of water. And, um, we have this big washer and oiler unit. Some, some parts need oiled, some part needs the oil removed. So you got a washer or an oiler and they're connected together and the motor went down on them. Something's wrong. And rather than, you know, uh, bring in the proper people on a day when the line isn't running, you know, to fix it and to get the right parts or whatever, or, or they should have someone because all the lines don't constantly run. I mean, there's a certain number of parts they have to hit. Uh, during the week or possibly on a weekend if they don't hit it during the week. But uh, so there's that. And, and But they won't bring the people in to fix it. As long as we'll go out there, rig it up and take a high low and push or pull it in or out, which could take 30, 40 minutes. And that's downtime, man. That's time that the line ain't running when we have to do that. It's so short-sighted. As long as we keep doing that, they're not going to bring in the right people to fix it or order the right parts. But you start to get a, a bunch of these little things on all the different lines Right. And the things they jump out and bypass the safety switches and everything else. You, you think something ain't going to move because you got it locked out. You're wrong. You go in there and, you know, it might move on you, you know, boy, and, and it's not supposed to kill you or maim you take off your hands or fingers or, hey, I mean, they're just doing it constantly left and right because they're so short. So they're just all about the money, right? All about the money, making themselves look good, hitting their numbers. And they've been lying, cheating. They've been buying off things that we're supposed to do, maintenance, preventive maintenance and everything. They've been saying they're doing it and they're not doing it. You know, uh, I mean, just so many things, which takes money out of our pocket because that's time we should be working, doing those things. When the lines aren't running, like on the weekends or on overtime or on holidays, they're stealing from us, basically, just to make themselves look good by hitting their numbers. But it's all going to come crashing down. Just like this world, this whole system, it's going to come crashing down around them. No doubt about it. Uh, what they think is, you know, going to profit them is actually going to be their downfall. And it's, it's the same in this world. So anyways, there's that. And it just makes me angry in a way, you know. But uh, God's the ultimate judge, like that verse said. There you go. All right. So God bless you. Love and respect everybody. That's what we're called to do. Plant seeds, right? And uh, God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.